doesn't have the right approach because maybe he doesn't understand the enemy. I've been telling you all since last week about a really exceptional article in The Atlantic entitled What ISIS Really Wants. I recommend you all read it. It's available online. Well, I have right now the author Graham Wood here with me. And he joins me now with more of his intel on it. Graham, welcome. Thank you. Um, a really outstanding piece. And I think that the one quote that I've cited numerous times since I read this was your, your remark that what, what people may not understand here or they, they want to not recognize is that Islamic State is Islamic, and you go on to say very Islamic. Does the religion itself play a vital role in terms of what these terrorists are doing and what they want, and how much does that hinder our ability to go after them? Yeah, when the, the Quran and say, okay, well, we can take uh, solace in this. We have our power from this. Yeah, it's, it's awfully to flock to. Then you might be able to tell them that, no, your, your dream is a false one. The, 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 they think it's actually their obligation to talk to you and to, to educate you about these things. It, it must have been hard, I mean, as a journalist. Well, to do uh, that. I mean, important piece, and people should read it. Thank you uh, for your reporting. Really outstanding, and thanks for joining me here today, Graham. Thanks. All right, everyone. Amazingly, despite Americans' fears, and these are very legit. The Pentagon is expanding its investigation into whether supervised... Um, Katie, good to see you. I, I wonder here, um, you know, the concern is that uh, people at the top, maybe the president himself, basically uh, indicated that he wanted to hear one thing. And let me ask you, is there pressure? You, you were a former Pentagon uh, official yourself. Is there pressure ever for, for employees to do the bidding of the president? Yeah, I mean, way? sure. We live in. If you were getting reports of a terror threat as president, would you not naturally do everything in your power to make sure you had every single bit of information you could have just to play it safe? Yeah. In Belgium, children aren't allowed to go to school today. They're all huddled. They're in, they're in you know, Total shelter lockdown. in a safe place. Total lockdown. In fact, we had it right here in New York City mm -hmm. up until the new mayor, Bill de Blasio, took over, uh, and that whole program was dismantled. Do we need it again? Sure. I mean, look what's happened in Europe. Europe for years has said everything's fine. It's all multicultural. You can say whatever you and go abroad, learn how to fight, come back and do attacks. Wow. They let that happen. And that's why Europe has the problem it has today. So I think he's factually incorrect. I mean, and this is the, the journalist who did a, a very extensive report on ISIS, its roots, what it wants, mm -hmm. what it's about. And he said, look, this is an organization that is Islamic, is Islamic. It is very Islamic. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand it. He's uh, the world couldn't get any more politically correct. Well list that he thinks the president should be calling retired four-star Army General Jack Keane. So good to be here, Trish. So has the president called? No. Uh, at the beginning of this crisis, though, his chief of staff did call, mm -hmm. but that was well over a year ago. Situation we're in right now. Um, if he did call, and you were you were talking to him today, what would be your prescription for for fix, fixing this mess? I mean, what what would you start with? Well, first mm -hmm. we have the capability to do that in and out. Only stay there for a few hours, but much larger than a handful. This is a force that's the international force on the ground to protect them. They have to be protected. And it's all along has been, would you really see a coalition of forces? I mean, I, I would suggest that right now, you now have that will. You have France in a situation where, you know, they're angry as H-E-double-L, -L, and they want to move on this. You've got Russia, of all places, Russia. Uh, also extraordinarily upset. I mean, it, it's Russia and France that are doing the bombing on ISIS targets right now and, and, and not so much us. This goes is we have provide leadership and also the moral courage and moral fiber to stand up against the adversaries and thugs. Beautiful situation which happened in this country, but you're not going to wind up with the United States of America. I mean, you don't have George Washington and Thomas Jefferson hanging out, figuring out how to create the new country. You've got lots of power grabs, and that's in part what has happened. Yeah, and this really is at the doorstep of the decision of disengagement. Mm -hmm. Iraq, Libya, Syria, disengagement from the Middle East. 
make the deal with the Iran says. So put and, it on pause until everybody's Yeah, make sure we got the right process, then let's change, including Europe's borders itself. Anyway, I'm out of time. General, thank you very much. It's Good to have you here. You. Happy in... Thanksgiving. All right, we're going to have more intel on this international crisis right after this. I'll see you right back here. Something new in his strategy to deal with ISIS today. Uh, however, he did, of course, make a pretty politicized argument, saying that we need to do everything we can to open our arms to bring in Syrian refugees. He wants to bring in as many as 10,000 next year. This would be beginning in just about five weeks from now. All the while, we continue looking at ISIS gaining ground. I'm here with KT McFarlane with her thoughts on the press conference. I get to tell you, I, I was telling you this earlier. I mean, I, I went into this this morning thinking... Maybe we'll hear something yeah. historic. Maybe he will get up there, hold hands with Hollande, mm -hmm. and say, we are in this together and we're going to take them down no matter what it takes. But then again, I'm sometimes a little too idealistic, <laughs> Kate. John came to Washington looking for leadership to say, we are just, <laughs> Do know. we have the climate change, guys? Danielle's <laughs> telling me that we have that. Oh, no, we, we've got another uh, example of him. Let me show you here of him saying how, how we're going to stand up to Islamic terrorists by, you know, insisting that we are a free nation by taking in more refugees. Watch this. Okay. So that, that's his big eloquent speech there. We're going to, you know, continue his plan to bring in refugees to this country, despite the fact mm -hmm. that a lot of people are very concerned about it, despite the fact that ISIS has said they will seed those refugee groups yeah. with terrorists, despite the fact that they already have. And we saw that happening there unfolding in Europe. Um, but, you, you know, back to this idea of how do we actually defeat them? We need to be working with other countries. We need to be working with France. Do we need to be working with Russia? Frankly, we need to, we've done this before. We did it. I don't know how you defeat it when you're not even recognizing the enemy at the gate. Well, he, he's not going to be the guy. He's made it really clear he's not going to be leading. And that's why Hollande is tomorrow. We have to use them as allies well, to defeat And then maybe this. that means Putin. And maybe this maybe also it means, means Iran and Saudi Arabia and maybe, saying we got to come together because if yeah. we don't, these guys want us dead. They're, that's where they go. Opportunity, and it's sad because this is America's oldest ally. And they stood with us through the American Revolutionary War. And then when they need us, we are not there. KT McFarland, thank you very thank you. much. The terrorism threat, it is front and center, everyone, on voters' minds. It is the number one issue in this election. And a new poll has Donald Trump trumping the, what, what Paris had to deal with there last night, basically a shootout there, um, a war zone in an apartment complex in a northern suburb there of Paris. Uh, this seems to be really what it's come down to. How do people in an environment like this um, feel secure, or is that just not possible, given the... Uh, about what is the likelihood that we're going to see something stay? Well, you know, and, and here's the problem right now, because those investigations could grow. They're talking about now bringing... Uh, 10,000 refugees in from Syria into the United States of America in less than six weeks. Um, we are a humane society. We want to help these people. But at the same time, we've got to help ourselves and we've got to take care of our own. And I think there are some real legitimate fears as to where our security, our national security is going to be if we bring in all of these people uh, from this river analogy you want to use, because then there are plenty more. Uh, we got reports, of course, today that American people just don't like the idea of this one single bit. Uh, so I've questioned the politics of all this. I, I think they may have just ceded the election to the Republicans here, because uh, I, I think a lot of people throughout the country on both sides of the aisle feel pretty strongly about this one, and that is that they want to be safe. PJ and Fran, thank you so much. You thank brought you. me, of course, to our next